In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation. Great to be with you. And as always, we'd like to start off our prayer in a special way to Mary. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. In the Hail, in the Hail Holy Queen, we cry out to Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let us uh, lift our hearts, our minds, our soul, our gaze to Mary as we pray that prayer that she loves most, and that is the Hail Holy Queen, the Hail, Hail Mary, rather. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. <clears throat> Amen. Now let's turn to our spiritual guide or spiritual director. Our spiritual guide or spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has many titles. These titles are the following. He is the paraclete. He is the gift of gifts. The Holy Spirit is also the sweet guest of our souls. The Holy Spirit is also known as our consoler. The Holy Spirit is also known as the counselor. The Holy Spirit is also known as our interior master. St. Paul goes on to say that in his letter to the Romans, we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so that we can say Abba. Abba, which means father or daddy. Let's beg the Holy Spirit to give us a lot of light, a lot of joy, a lot of peace. He'll give us that interior fire to set our hearts on fire with, for, for the love of God and the salvation of souls. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. Thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by lay the Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Ignatius, pray for us. St. Faustina, pray for us. St. Maximilian Kolbe, pray for us. St. John Paul II, pray for us. St. Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's holy angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance family and like to promise you my prayers. So today I'll pray for you in a very special way. And I'd like to place you on the altar in the holy sacrifice of the Mass begging God to send you a 
a deluge of graces, you as well as your family members. I'd like to offer three special intentions. One is that all of us, in honor of the saint that we celebrate today, we would all make a concerted effort to grow in holiness, to become the best version of ourself, as Matthew Kelly expresses it. The best version of ourself, of course, would be that all of us will try, strive in our lives to grow in holiness. As Jesus says, be holy as your Heavenly Father is holy. My second intention will be I'd like to pray for your families. For your families, for your children, for your teenagers, for your grandchildren. That as many of them will be returning to school within the next few days, that these few days would be days of growth in many ways. That your children will, will go to Mass this weekend. Maybe they can make a good confession to cleanse their souls from sin this weekend. That they could be of service to you and your family, helping out to order the disorder that you have in, in your homes. Then your children will get physical exercise, which is good for all of us, but especially children. They have a lot of energy. They should expand their energy by good physical exercise, sports. And then that your children will get in the habit of, to do good spiritual reading, good reading in general. A good book can be our salvation. And then may your children cultivate good friendships. Aristotle says that man is a social animal. It's important that we have good friends. Bible says that a friend is a is a is a great treasure. Then may your children cultivate their talents. It might be musical talents. It might be artistic talents. It might be intellectual talents. It might be literary talents. It might be sports talents. Talents have to be recognized. Talents have to be cultivated. As the young people today say, if you don't use it, then you lose it. We're called to use, to cultivate the talents that Almighty God has given to each and every one of us. We don't want to end up like the man in the parable of Jesus who dug a hole and threw his talent in the ground. And he was later chastised, punished by his master because he did not cultivate that talent. Let's cultivate our talents and invite our children to cultivate their talents. That brings me to another intention for all of us. I'll pray for you, you pray for me, that we will grow in our prayer life. Prayer life might be compared to watering the plants. We water the plants, then the plants can grow. We water our spiritual life by prayer. By watering our spiritual life by prayer, our interior garden, the flowers within our soul, which are virtues, will start to grow, blossom, and flourish. So let's uh, like to pray that our prayer life will become more and more important for us. St. Augustine says he who prays well lives well he who 
he who prays well lives well. He who lives well dies well. He who dies well all is well. So these are my intentions for all of us, that this would be a very fruitful day. I'd like you also to pray for me because at 940, I'll be giving an international talk by, by means of Zoom to the group Jovenes Pada Cristo throughout the country to invite you to maybe offer prayer for myself as well as these uh, groups spread throughout the country. My modern platform is, is the internet. Even though we have the pandemic, it's a great platform or pulpit by which we can preach to many, many people throughout the country, throughout the world. Jesus said, go out to the whole world and teach them all I taught you. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. So that being said, Sunday is the day that we celebrate the risen Lord Jesus. Monday, pray in a special way for the souls in purgatory. Tuesday, we honor the angels. Wednesday, we honor good St. Joseph. Thursday, we honor the priesthood and the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Friday, we contemplate the Passion of Christ. Today is Saturday. Saturday is a day in which we honor in a very special way the Blessed Virgin Mary. The readings today are taken from Joshua, in which Joshua challenges the people to follow the Lord. And Joshua says to follow the Lord. And he says, as for me and my household, we will follow the Lord. People say, we'll follow him too. And they end up by not following him. The responsorial psalm is, you are my inheritance, O Lord. The Gospel today is very short. In this Gospel we have children are being brought to Jesus. Then he may lay hands on them and the, the Apostles rebuke the people. Jesus says, let the little children come to me. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. And after Jesus placed his hands on them, he went away. So there we have our spiritual menu for today. Joshua challenged the people to follow the Lord. And Joshua says, as for me and my family, we will follow the Lord. The Lord is our inheritance. And then we see Jesus, his great love for children. The disciples rebuked them for bringing, but Jesus said, let them come to me. What I'd like to do with you today, I'd like to start off by commenting with you on a great modern saint. I had the privilege many years ago, I had the privilege many years ago of being present at the canonization of this saint. Saint that I admire very much. Hopefully you also will, admi will admire this saint very much. When someone is canonized, what has happened is that the church recognizes that this person has, during the course of his life, practiced heroic virtue. During the course of his life, it doesn't mean that this saint had to carry out miracles in his life. But after he dies, 
miracles are attributed to him. First miracle, venerable. Second miracle, blessed. Third miracle, saint. So the saint that we celebrate today, his name is Saint Maximilian Mary Colby. Saint Maximilian Mary Colby. He was born on January 8th, 1894, in Poland. He died August 14th, today. August 14th, nineteen forty one. This is the vigil of the Assumption. He was canonized forty one years later. October nineteen eighty two by Pope John Paul the Second. Pope John Paul II was very, very impressed by the life of his compatriot. You have three great Polish saints living at the same time. Colby, who was born in 1894. St. Faustini Kowalski, who was born in 1905 and dies in 1938. And John Paul II, who was born in 1920 and died 2005. So you have a triangle of saints that are living very close to each other. What really bonded them was their great love for God and their living out that of mercy. Love and mercy. An intense love for God and neighbor and a living out God's mercy were the hallmarks of these three great modern Polish saints. So let's try to get to know Colby and hopefully he'll become one of our friends. He'll become part of our our Perseverance family. So he was born in 1894 in Poland. Now, just that you're aware of this, when you, when some be, someone become uh, a religious or a woman becomes a nun, sometimes, depending upon the order, they actually they get a new name. For oblates, we keep our names, but for Franciscans, it is possible to change their name. So Maximilian Colby, he took in religion his name Maximilian Mary Colby. The name that was given to him at birth was Raymond, Raymond Colby. His parents were very religious. They actually entered into a monastery. And St. Maximilian, when he was 10 years of age, had a mystical experience that changed his life. He was 10. And apparently he was a little bit mischievous. He'd gotten into trouble. And his mother said, Raymond, 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 what's ever going to happen to you? And he took this to heart, became more serious with his life. Then he had a mystical experience that changed his life. One day, a woman appeared to him. A beautiful woman in white appeared to him. And she presented to him Two crowns. 
a white crown and a red crown. And she asked him, which of these two crowns would you like? And with great spontaneity and great generosity, the 10 year old little boy said, I would like both of them. And these two crowns that he willingly accepted, both the white and the red, symbolize his life. The white would be the white crown of purity. And the red would be the way in which Colby would end his life. That would be shedding his blood as a martyr. So to really understand this saint, very important that we understand very important we understand the whole thrust of this vision he had from who he would call the Immaculata. Because Colby had great, great devotion to Mary and he called her the Immaculata. In honor of the Immaculate Conception. It's interesting today, the 14th, tomorrow we celebrate the Assumption of Mary. So it's very appropriate that we have Colby's feast day right before Mary's solemnity. So let's go through his life and, and beg for his example, his intercession. What a great saint. So he joins the Franciscans and his brother also goes to the Franciscans. And he's only 13 when he enters. Then he goes to Rome to study. He studies at the Angelicum, where John Paul II studied, as well as I studied also at the Angelicum. And he was ordained. He was ordained when he was about 22 years of age. And as mentioned, he had great, great devotion to the Immaculate, Mary Immaculate. And Colby worked very hard to spread devotion to her throughout the whole world. Colby had a strong missionary heart. He wanted to say in one of his letters that we read in the Liturgy of the Hours today is that God longs for the salvation of souls. That's what God wants more than anything else. God wants the salvation of souls. So Colby had a strong missionary heart. His health was never really that good. He actually had only one lung that functioned, like Pope Francis. So his health was not always that good, but God speaking through St. Paul, it says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So he travels to India, and he travels to Japan to set up monasteries for the spreading of the kingdom. Colby had great love for Mary, as we've already mentioned, And he'd always be walking around, and in his pockets, he would have the miraculous medals. He'd have a miraculous medal in which he'd try to give as, as many miraculous medals to as many people as possible. These are called miraculous because so many miracles have been attributed to this medal. Colby would call these his spiritual bullets to slay the enemy. And Colby's going to set up a society in Rome called the Militia of the Immaculata, which still exists today. He set this up to, to fight against the modern heresies. The modern heresy back then 
was that of masonry. Colby's going to be living the time of the Cristeros in Mexico. He's living at the same time. He'll be living at the time of the economic depression which hit the United States as well as the world in the late 20s and 30s. A difficult time. He's going to be living during the time of the First World War and the Second World War where eventually he'll lose his life for Christ. Among the many apostolic enterprises or works of Colby was he published a magazine. He believed very strongly in the importance of good literature, good Catholic literature. And this magazine came out monthly and his title was The Night of the Immaculate. The Night of the Immaculate. And this is, we're, we're talking about close to, well, 90 years ago where magazines were not as popular as today. We have so much literature out there today. And he got as many as a million subscribers to this magazine, which would be translated into different languages. So Colby taught the gospel under Mary's protection to all nations. If you really want to meet a saint that had great love, confidence, trust in the Blessed Mother, get to know St. Maximilian Colby. And I said at the beginning of my talk, I was actually present at his canonization. What a, what a privilege. In the Plaza of San Pedro with John Paul II who canonized him. In 1982, what a privilege. So Colby went about and he would, he was a founder of a spiritual centers, which he would call, he would set up these centers and he would call them the city of Mary Immaculate. We talked in the past about what is called the Benedictine option as well as the Marian option. The Benedictine option was such that St. Benedict sought refuge in a cave, then a monastery, fleeing from the world. Noah was saved in the ark. So honestly, I believe in honor of Maximilian Colby today, we have to find our refuge in the Immaculata. We have to find our refuge in the Immaculate Heart of Mary under her mantle. There's a beautiful artistic depiction of Mary, which you see Mary with her mantle open up. And beneath that mantle, you see people hovering underneath the mantle. And those are the saints. The saints seek their refuge underneath the mantle of Mary. The saints seek their refuge in the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So he, he sets up this these Mary Marian centers called City of Mary Immaculate. So in Japan, he established a city at Nagasaki. And it's very interesting, you, all of you have heard of Hiroshima and Nagasaki where the atomic bomb was dropped at the end of the Second World War. And it's interesting that he had a convent 
a monastery there in Nagasaki. And many of the homes and buildings were destroyed, whereas his convent, his monastery, was not destroyed. We see this, uh, this as an intervention from the Immaculata. We see Mary's mantle protecting Colby and his friars and brother priests. He's a saint that we really should get to know and love. Andre Frossard has written a very good book on him. Mary Winiski wrote a book, Death Can't Prove Him Real. You might even read some of his writings. They're just so fascinating. And he has so much love for the Immaculata. You cannot help to read the writings of Colby and not grow in your love for the Immaculata. So let's talk about the end of the life of Colby and how he ended his life in such a glorious fashion. The Gospel today, the children are brought to Jesus. In honor of Colby, we are the children of Mary. That's true. The children are brought to Jesus, we are called to be the children of Mary. Filipinos say, Mama Mary. True, Mary is our mother. So today and tomorrow is a good day in which we can renew our love for the Immaculata. So this is what happened. We've arrived now at the, the end of the life of Colby. He's going to be living into his 40s. So the second world breaks out. And Hitler and the Nazis and the Gestapo are spreading throughout the whole world. Well, spreading throughout Europe, let's say. So, they eventually will arrive at Poland. And I'm sure you know that the Nazis, it was a racist group. And one of the primary targets was to destroy the Jewish people which Hitler had the, inten the, in the intention of exterminating the Jews on the face of the earth. So Hitler and the Nazis were growing stronger and stronger, dominating and overcoming many countries. So the Nazis end up in, they end up in Poland. Now what Colby was doing, Colby was sheltering many Polish people, both Christians and Jews alike, as did Pope Pius XII. Many criticized Pope Pius XII for not doing enough. Quite the contrary, Pope Pius XII tried to help out finding refuge for the Jews as did Colby. So he risked his life to help these suffering people. So in late 30s, the Gestapo entered in and they arrested the friars and Colby for a relatively short time. And then they were freed. But this is the critical day on February 17th. February 17th, 1941. He was arrested. 
and he was sent to prison first in Warsaw, Warsaw, Poland. There he is given a convict's uniform. So you see pictures of Colby with a convict or prisoner, prisoner's uniform. And they give him a number. The number they gave him on his uniform was 16670. 16670. Then Colby was transferred from Warsaw. to a concentration camp in Auschwitz. Auschwitz. On August 9th, we celebrated Edith Stein, also known as Sister Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. She's going to end up in the same place that Colby was sent about a year later with her with her sister Rosa. And either Stein, Sister Teresa Benedicta La Cruz will die in the gas chamber with her sister Rosa. Now Colby he was sent to this concentration camp in Auschwitz where being very weak, fragile, barely anything to eat, he endured very hard work and beatings that almost killed him. Once he was asked, who are you? He said, I am a Catholic priest. He had no identity crisis. He knew who he was he knew what his mission was. No identity crisis whatsoever. So even though he's in this concentration camp, secretly, he would go about and hear confessions of the people. Because the Polish people that were in prison, almost all the Polish people are Catholics. It's one, it has been one of the strongest Catholic countries in the world. You hear confessions. He would speak to other prisoners about God's love. He would pray with them. He would sing with them. He would encourage these people, even though he's treated worse than a dog. Colby entrusted his life these last hours to the Immaculata. When food was brought in, he would step aside so that the other prisoners could eat. Sometimes there was nothing for him to eat at all. So we arrive now at the, we set the scene for the death of Colby. How did this come about? Well, the prisoners were divided into blocks or groups. And if a prisoner escaped, then what happened, what would happen, 10 other prisoners would be put to death, would be chastised because of this. So one day, one of the prisoners escapes and Ten of them had to pick lots to see who, who, who would suffer punishment due to the 
this escapee. So ten were chosen, and one man, whose name was Francisco, one old man who had a wife and a family, said, No, I'll never see my wife and my children again. He was worried about the safety and the security and the sustenance of his wife and his children. Now what happened was something was shocking. The prisoners would be standing in an orderly line. The Germans have a very orderly way of thinking and acting. They're in an orderly line. And they should never break the line. Never break the line. But Colby broke the line and he walked right toward the commander. And he spoke to him. He said, look, this man is a father of a family. I am not a father of a family. I do not have children like him. Take me. Who are you? I'm a Catholic priest. So someone in shock, the Nazi commander, looking at Colby and the married man, he accepted the request. He accepted the request of Colby. And he freed the married man from his death sentence. So really see now as Colby is heading toward the end of his life, the nobility of the character of Colby, his holiness, his love, his charity, his patience, his perseverance, his fortitude, his strength. So the soldiers, a soldier, the Gestapo takes Colby and nine other of the men and they're taken away to what is called a bunker, a separate place where they will die. It's also called the pit. So in the pit, Father Colby led the nine men, so there are ten of them all together. He led them in prayer, and song to Mary, God's mother. He lifted their spirits. Makes me think about St. Paul when he was in the prison with Silas. Paul was arrested. He was beaten. And there he is at midnight with Silas singing, praying and singing hymns. And God sends an earthquake in which the doors are open and Paul ends up by saving the prison guard, baptizing him and his whole household. So as Paul sang hymns in prison, so did Maximilian Colby sing hymns in jail, trying to really encourage these people in their suffering. So should we do the same. God has given us consolation, so we should console others. As St. Paul says in the second letter of the Corinthians, 
we have received much of the consolation from God, so shall we console others. So Colby was in this bunker, this consecration camp. A bunker would be a separate place for those who were condemned to die. But his death was much more difficult than most of the martyrs. For example, in the time of the Cristados, they would be hung or shot. St. Paul was decapitated. Of course, they were suffering, but it happened quickly. Colby's death was different, as well as the nine men with him. His death would be his starvation. So the soldiers deprived Colby as well as the other nine men from food. So imagine their hunger, imagine their thirst, and they would die one by one. And as recorded, don't forget that Colby, Colby only had Colby only had one lung. His health was very fragile, but he outlived all of them. So after two weeks of starvation, all the others had died, except Colby. Colby made the prophecy that they're ne they were never going to discover his body. So that his place would be evacuated. Colby was eventually killed. What happened was they injected into his vein carbolic acid. And after this fatal injection of basically poison injected into his vein, Colby, and I'd like to say Saint Maximilian Colby, Saint Maximilian Colby, breathed forth his spirit into the hands of his Heavenly Father. So in that moment we see that this prophetic dream of Colby, the little boy Raymond, this prophetic dream of Colby, little Raymond, with the vision of Mary the Immaculate holding out two crowns. The white crown and the red crown. This prophetic dream of Colby became a reality in that moment. White crown, Colby had lived a life of great innocence, of great purity, of mind, body, heart, and soul. Because he had such an intense love for God, an intense love pure love for the Immaculata. And the red, of course, is the crown of martyrdom. Jesus says, No greater love has a man than that he lay down his life for his brothers and sisters. So 
So the body of Colby was incinerated, was burned with the other prisoners and thrown in the river such that his prophecy became a reality. They would never find his remains. So I think it's very appropriate that Colby died Colby died exactly today. Exactly today, this is the eightieth this is the eightieth anniversary of the death of Maximilian Colby. Eightieth anniversary, exactly today is the eightieth anniversary. He died in 1941, August 14th. It is so appropriate because of his great love for the Blessed Virgin Mary. So appropriate. Because nine years later, after his death, nine years later, Pope Pius XII, servant of God, would proclaim officially the fourth Marian dogma, which we celebrate tonight and tomorrow. And that is the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, this was proclaimed by Pope Pius XII, November 1st, 1950. How appropriate. How appropriate that Colby's feast day is celebrated the vigil of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into Heaven. How appropriate. So as I said earlier in the very beginning of my talk, I feel very honored because I've only been in my life, I've only be, been present at one canonization ceremony in my life. And this happened to be October 1982. I was a novice of the Oblates of the Virgin Mary. Our novitiate was on the Janiculum Hill, only about a mile away from the Vatican. So myself and actually Father Dave was there and Father Craig was there. Father Craig had just arrived from as a new postulant. We had the privilege of being present at the canonization of St. Maximilian Kolbe. What a privilege. He was canonized by St. Pope John Paul II. What a privilege. What a great privilege. Another interesting note is the following. That Maximilian Kolbe When we celebrate him today, the priest will come out in red. Because he died as a martyr. And John Paul II proclaimed him a martyr of charity. Why a martyr of charity? Charity means love. No greater love in the world than to give one's life for another. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, of course, is the model for all, but most especially the model all for all in the realm of martyrdom. Of 
who was present who was present at the martyrdom of Colby Mother Teresa was present there John Paul II was the one that canonized him we a few oblates were present there but of great great importance who also was present there this 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 may really shock you the man for whom colby gave up his life was present there at the canonization of Maximilian Colby. The man, Francisco, was, I think, in his 80s. How impressive that we have the very man whose life Colby actually spared so that eventually he'd be released from the concentration camp. He'd go back to his town, go back to his wife, go back to his children, and live at least another 40 years because of the love and the devotion of Colby. What a great, great saint we have in St. Maximilian Colby. As we start out our conversations, I pray for all of us that we'll become saints. We have to have these models upon which we can pattern our lives. Colby's a great one. St. Maximilian Colby, in a very succinct, clear way, he goes on to say that there are three steps, three steps to growing in holiness and arriving at the universal call to sanctity. What are the three steps? Colby says we have to pray. Prayer is essential. Without a prayer life, we'll never arrive at sanctity. Second, Colby points out that we have to pray, but we have to work. Saint Benedict has ore e labora. Paul says, "Work out your salvation in fear and trembling." Finally, Colby mentions the fact that. We have to suffer. But it's not suffer by ourselves. Suffer with God. To carry the cross with God. And that's how Colby ended his life. By suffering and receiving the palm of martyrdom. So may the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi Colby was a Franciscan, be our prayer. And that prayer is, we adore you, Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I ask you to pray for me. I'll be giving an international talk to Hovenis Pater Cristo from 940 to 1040 by means of Zoom. Pray for me, and I'll pray for you. The Lord be with you. Through the intercession of the Knight of the Immaculata, Colby, and God's angels and saints, may God bless you in a very special way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen.